Thank you, Valentine. Viewers, you should know that uh, the education sector is currently <coughs> undergoing a lot of reform. There are reforms at every level. I should say this is one of the reforms in the teacher education component. And uh, I would like to ask you, Haji Kibedi, tell the viewers, why is it that we are here at this point in time? And what should they expect from you, Haji? Yeah, we are here basically to discuss uh, the teacher policy, a teacher policy that was <coughs> passed by cabinet in 2019 and uh, officially inaugurated by the Speaker of the Parliament on 5th of October that very year. We are here also to discuss particular teacher management information system that is part of the teacher policy in this country. So we expect our viewers to know uh, what this policy is and what the ministry is doing to make sure that this policy is implemented for the benefit of the teachers in this country because one of the most important ingredients in the education system is the teacher. If you have a good teacher, if you have a quality teacher, then we are assured that over 50% you have quality education. That's what we are here to do, moderator. Thank you, Haji. I know that Valentine has a background of information technology. But uh, when the national teacher policy came into force, automatically improvement in terms of information management systems has to be embedded. And we have to discuss this policy looking at the, te uh, at the teamies. Valentine, what essence does this policy offer us, mostly those viewing in terms of information management? Uh, thank you, uh, Patrick. This policy uh, has come to make things work out. How? The world is moving to an area where it is impossible to put anything in place without ICT. And ICT now is like the backbone of everything we do. ICT is almost becoming the road, the highway, the path that we use. How? When you have ICT applications, when you have ICT in place, like the National Teachers Policy is mentioning, our teachers will be digital era teachers, the teachers of the 21st century, which the Commissioner uh, Haji here talks about. Without ICT, we cannot move to that era that we need. So the National Teachers Policy recommended uh, the establishment uh, of TIMIS. How? To ensure that the information that teachers used to bring then, manual at the ministry, now can be captured electronically from wherever they would be. And as a result, TIMIS came into existence. TIMIS uh, was launched uh, in 2018. And we've moved systematically with the TIMIS and we've not had any major challenge. All teachers have now adapted the online registration. If you go out there and ask any teacher you met, do you have the new registration certificate? The teacher will tell you yes. Actually, that is the current uh, certificate being used. Patrick, I can thank you very much for the work you did during the launch of TIMIS. You sensitized teachers. You were on board with us. And I think we did a very great work. Thank You've been you. on this thing. And I can categorically tell the viewers that you were part and parcel of this initiative. Today we are here, we are discussing beyond TIMIS. We are discussing major other components that are in the, in the national teachers' policy. And as Haji had initially said, and as you know, more initiatives, more operators, more inputs, more establishments, more improvements are coming up as explained in the national teachers policy. And I see it is one of them. So teachers, we are in the ICT direction. And even you, Bonaparte, <laughs> we are in the ICT direction. Yes. So nobody should be left behind when you talk about ICT.
Thank you, Valentine. When you talk about teachers being on board, I recall a few days ago, I was meeting a team of teachers and I challenged them whether they can open an email address using their smartphone. So in terms of low-hanging fruits, I think teams should come up to offer us practical approaches to improving <coughs> these teachers' hands-on skills. Uh, Patrick, I can, I can tell you yes. that uh, smartphones can't work without email addresses. How do teachers get these email addresses? How do they register to get... Uh, for you to download an app on, on, on Google Play Store, you must have an email address. So anybody having a smartphone of whatever nature must have, or you are using either someone's mail address. How did, how did you get there? The internet cafe and those people who set for them mm. passwords <coughs> that uh -huh. you find have forgotten the password. Then this is what we are telling them, that you don't wait to be set for a password. Do it yourself. You know, when we go to a situation that uh, teachers must be spoon-fed, we shall spoil the entire applications. Teachers must learn. Now, when you go into URA, oh, teachers, you have to do T numbers, how to get T numbers. Mm -hmm. I have never seen URA team moving outside there that now you've come to teach team. people how, how to, to get to T numbers. Mm -hmm. Now we are getting passport. I think you may be having yours now, the new format. Mm -hmm. How are they doing? I don't think whether you were taught that go to this, do this, click here, and you get your passport. Some of this learning are self centered. You must be ready to go. Otherwise, the world is moving at a direction where when you stop at some point, you'll find people at certain other point, which you may not catch up with. Thank you so much, Valentine. And also, I hope that all colleague teachers out there are listening, including directors of private schools, should not leave the business to the head teachers only. And when it comes to application of information, you find that... Uh, a director has to wait for the head teacher, and the head you teacher see? has to wait for the teacher uh, who uh, knows the how skills. To use. And mm. unfortunately, yes, uh, the directors in the in the group where you a member, yep, you should take keen interest of the certificate that teachers are bringing to you when they are seeking for these vacancies. Mm. Directors can verify. You don't even need to have an account on Timis for you to verify whether this was gotten through the right procedure. We have a section on the Timmy's website. You just click on it and input the number the teacher has brought for you, 14 digit numbers. And you will return either is invalid or Val the certificate was issued. So, director, outside, if you're a director and you're outside there, you can do this at your comfort zone or in the office. And you'll know a teacher A did not pass through the right procedure. You don't even need to consult the ministry. You just sit and access the system website and verify them. You will discover that among us there, to your own shock, use the wrong format to get the certificate, which the system does not recognize. Very great indeed. And now this <coughs> gives us an opportunity to ask Haji. Yeah. <coughs> you see the national teacher policy has moved a long way since 2013 mm. from the study. Mm would love you to inform our viewers some key highlights from that study. Mm. Then from the study, you take us through the teacher policy standards, mm. and then you delve into the real issues that teachers should benefit from the national teacher policy. Mm. Thank you very much. For, for beginners, the national teacher <coughs> policy is the result of uh, TIMIS, which I mean, I mean uh, TISA. TISA which is Teacher Issues for Sub-Saharan Africa, a study that was carried out in Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, and Uganda benefited from it. And like I've rightly said, moderator, in 2013, it came on board. And one of the issues was to form a teacher policy, that government comes up with a teacher policy. Because we had some fragments of uh, regulations and uh, that were not really concrete. So this, when this teacher policy came in force, uh, it has quite a number of things. But the essence is to professionalize the teaching profession so that the teaching profession is recognized like all other respectable uh, professions. That is the essence. So that we have a teacher who is professional, the respect of the profession, and so on and so forth. So 
what do we expect the teachers to benefit from uh, this policy? First of all, the policy is giving quite a number of standards that we shall uh, highlight very briefly. But <coughs> it is important that our teachers know that the coming in force of this policy is for their own benefit. Uh, some of the, the, the standards that we are talking about, one, we would like to see that all teachers begin as graduate teachers. So that regardless of what level you are, whether you are in, in, a, in nursery, whether you're in primary, secondary, or tertiary, you begin as a graduate teacher. That one ena will enable us to have uh, teachers who begin at the same salary as another standard that teachers will be getting the same salary regardless of what level somebody is, is teaching. And in order to do this, we, the policy is talking about establishing the Uganda National Institute for Teacher Education. This institute will be there to regulate the training of teachers plus their CPDs. That a teacher will be required to register after every two years. Currently, we have been registering. Once a teacher is registered as a teacher, then you would go on forever until maybe you quit uh, the service. But now the, the, the policy is telling us, we, like all other professions are, a teacher should be able to register every two years. What Mr. Uh, Wari has been talking about, using the teacher management information system. Online, you register, and then you are able to register. The policy uh, is talking of establishing a teacher council. A teacher council will be in charge of regulating uh, the teaching profession. Uh, what does that this mean? It would mean that you have the qualified teachers in the profession. It will be responsible for registering these teachers after every two years. It will be working in hand in hand with the unit which I've talked about to make sure that uh, our teachers undergo continuous professional development. It will be responsible for the motivation and incentivizing of our teachers. One of the issues we have our teachers, as uh, the research showed, was that we have a teaching force that is not uh, well motivated. So now we are coming up with the, the teacher council to ensure that our teachers are well motivated uh, throughout the country and they do their work to be able to produce uh, teach a, a quality education in this country. The teacher council will also be responsible for discipline, to discipline the teachers. You see, when you reward, you must always think of those who are not rewarded, those who are doing the, the reverse. What do you do with them? So this teacher council will be responsible for ensuring that our teachers are well disciplined, those that have issues are, are handled. The teacher council will also work with the, the Education Service Commission to provide them with information regarding the teachers that are being, uh, are being uh, recruited. And therefore, the teacher management we also improve according to the teacher, uh, the teacher policy. Right from those who are decentralized, like the primary teachers are under the districts, they will be benefiting from this uh, policy by ensuring that they are well registered, they are well recruited, and we believe that this will also help us to remove the ghost teachers that has been a problem in this country for, for many years. So in brief, that is, those are some of the highlights in our policy regarding the teacher uh, policy in this country. Thank you so much, Haji, for that wonderful presentation. Hoping that uh, everybody is following us, both online and in your living room, or wherever you are watching us from. I would like to acknowledge the support given by UNESCO, enabling us to sit here and sensitize everybody watching us that this support is received and we acknowledge that. Otherwise, this is the most important activity, sensitization yeah. and communication. Correct. And on the point of communication, I want to bring in Mr. Ward. Mr. Ward, you know that uh, in the past 10 or so years, we've had issues of ghost teachers. We've had issues of ghost everything, I should say. Mm. How do we see Timis, which is part of this national teacher policy, helping the sector in terms of addressing the issue of ghosts? Uh, Timis, first time, will eliminate uh, teachers that are not teachers. When I say teachers that are not teachers, 
I mean, yes, you pretend to be a teacher, but you're not a qualified teacher. Mm -hmm. How you go those documents, you know it. So, tell me, uh, what we're doing now, uh, upon registrations, we shall be matching the two systems from the public service ministry. The team is at the Ministry of Education and Sports, and teachers that do not appear to have been certified by the ministry now in the new online registration system will be off. So in either way, we shall know who exactly is available. Because you don't expect a ghost to register. <laughs> <laughs> Unless if that is a living ghost. And that living ghost must be a human being. So how a ghost will go to the system to feed in this other information that we may require will not be possible. As we talk now, some teachers are fearing to come into the system. They are fearing. Because what if I got these documents in a wrong way? They are fearing to come in. So we have areas where we've gotten many of them uh, that have issues and we've written back to them and we are addressing the issue. And when time comes, the issue of ghost teachers will, will not exist. Because one, we either know you are in this school by this number Oh, you're not there. So if you have Mr. Y, initially in a certain school in Kabong, and in the system, that Mr. Y has not registered, then we shall wonder, where did Mr. Y go? Did Mr. Y exist in real sense? Oh, Mr. Y was in gaseous form. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, start to imagine in Mr. Y. Mm -hmm. So we shall get them out. Should we say that the team is process is only for teachers in public schools? No, 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 no. That can't work. Team is allows every teacher. Like I, I think I should give the background. Initial teachers, upon coming out of the institutions of higher learning, you must come to the Ministry of Education to do this activity manually. The ministry must recognize you and would then issue the manual certificate. This manual certificate was a gate pass to you to going looking for jobs and vacancies wherever you are because it would show the ministry then recognizes the institution that you went to and the ministry then recognizes the courses you did the ministry then recognizes that indeed you went and did teach, uh, teaching practice you know some of these key things are very sensitive uh, and commissioner here look at them critically you cannot go and do a course for teaching and you do not have other aspects in there and they will issue a certificate no mm. so what happens is if a teacher is out of the institution of higher learning must come to the minister which is now online the minister will issue you with this certificate upon establishing that indeed you studied maybe on that point valentine mm. yes uh, it would be good for the viewers mm -hmm. looking at us mm -hmm. to know the process from the first step to the last step of being issued <coughs> a certificate. If you could take us through that process. Yeah, the steps are very simple. Yes. Uh, it's just like moving from here to that camera. Yes. <laughs> so uh, before you go into the system website, you must have an internet, uh, our viewers and teachers listening, you must have an internet enabled device. What does that mean? The device you are using to access the system must be having internet connectivity in it. So, the system website is www.tmis.go.ug. www.tmis.go.ug. The W's are three. Uh, some of our teachers had challenges. How? They would put two W's. You get it? Hmm. The W's are three. These are standard communication protocols within the ICT industry, <laughs> which I may, I may not go into it in details, mm -hmm. but just put www.tmis.go.ug. The gadget will automatically take you to the system website. There's a very simple form there at the first interface that you fill your basic information details. Just like if you went to some hospital and they are asking you, where do you come from? This basic information that any other entity may require of a person when you're doing a simple registration with them. What are your names? Date of birth, 
where do you come from? Then upon filling that first interface, you'll click next. Remember, you must have a valid email address. This system communicates to your email. The link between you and the system is via the email. And now, if you don't have the email, then you cannot even start the registration process. Because when the certificate that the system will issue will come to your email. So the email you have must be known to you, plus the password. So having input your email address there, you'll go to the next stage. The system will check you whether you have access to the email by sending a code to that email you've provided in there in the first interface. A code must be put in the scan interface of the registration process. If you don't access that code, it means you have no access to this email address you had given in. And the process will end from there until you show cause that you can access the email to retrieve the code. Mm. So if you retrieve the code, you fill in the basic information in there which they may require. And the third step is for you to load in your documents. We also want in there which institutions you went because you do background check. You can't say you were in Kapela Biong Primary School. Oh, to my village primary school or Kwira primary school in Toro, in the mm -hmm. sub count. Yet you were never there. We must confirm that you were in a school Y. And the school Y recognizes you. Did you go for your A level in that school? Did you go for your O level in that school? Put the school name there. And we refer to the school, whether you remember or you did not. So, having done that, the system will require you to indicate the subjects you are teaching. Which subjects do you teach? Some of our teachers that were mixing this information, but I want to tell them that the subjects we want in the system are those that you teach, not those that you studied. This must be clear. You do get a teacher A putting all the subjects <laughs> from senior four mm. to the current education level. And you, you open and the entire subjects are there as if somebody, sorry, someone is writing a Bible. So what happens is, put the subjects that you are teaching at this level. One must be a major one, then the other one may be a minor subject. Then upload your document. The documents must be in PDF form. Scan all your documents in PDF form. The system only recognizes that format. PDF is a short form for portable document format. Can you repeat that? PDF? Yes. Directly there. Yes. PDF is a short form for portable <coughs> document format. That is what the system recognizes. And if you go to these other systems that do registration, you will discover that it's the same thing they may want from you. Because printing a document from that format is very easy. There is no any faint kind of interface that you may see. When you get a document in that format, it's very easy to read. Mm. Can, I, can I add what documents yes. are required? Hard, add on. Yes, uh, teachers out there, you must know what documents do we expect of you. We expect if you have your primary seven certificate, you scan that one. Scan your all level certificate. If you need to scan your A level certificate, that is if you did A level. Then your institution of higher education documents where you have a certificate and a, a transcript. Make sure that the, as you, you have certified copies from the university where you attended your either diploma or a grade three certificate or a degree. Or grade two. Or grade two if, yeah. if, if you did that. So make sure they are certified and then you scan them, put them in a PDF file, as uh, Valentine has said, then attach them. We, are, we shall also need your national ID for you to be given uh, this certificate. And uh, Mr. Moderator Patrick, uh, going back to the earlier question you asked, yes. this uh, national ID now can help us to identify whether you were ghost or not, like uh, Valentine has said. And even if even if a certificate was issued to you in the IRA or without detecting some something, so later when we detect, it is easier for us you, to use the national ID to trace you from wherever you are and be able to catch up. With so, you. Haj, it means that if the certificate was issued in error, it yeah. can be recalled. Yes, it yeah. can be very fast. Can very be recalled fast. Very yes. fast. Yes. And we shall notify whoever is concerned that this this person got this one in error. 
And uh, it's at this time that I want to thank the TET department or the Teacher Instruct Education and Training Department at the Ministry of Education and Sports for these reforms. Yeah. Because this reform presents the teacher as somebody respected yeah. in society. True. You know, in the past, they would say, ah, look, he's a mere teacher. Even the teacher say, I'm <laughs> a mere teacher. teacher. <laughs> that inferiority <laughs> complex mm. should be totally Rest, eliminated yeah. by mm. this policy. Mm. And it uh, brings you to share with us mm. on the issue of teacher symbolism mm. and also teacher admission and enrollment. Mm. Who are those people are we looking at going forward to enroll as great teachers in our institution? Yeah, because, thank you, because we are looking at now a respectable teacher, a professional teacher, a quality <coughs> teacher, uh, the entry requirement very soon will be a level. Everybody will have to enter after passing very well at a level. And then you decide whether you are going for early childhood, that is the nursery teaching, primary or secondary for, the tr for training in whatever institution that you will be joining. Uh, and for uh, the information of our viewers, once this one starts, even the institutions of training will now determine it. It will not be just a question of using joint admission board, uh, JABO, that is commonly known, and then you just find your name pinned up. No. Teachers are now going to be interviewed at the institutions of their choice, either university or even our primary teachers' colleges that are going to be turned into degree awarding or national teachers' colleges that are going to be turned into degree awarding. They will be interviewed and you will prove to the interviewing board at that institution that you are the worst teacher that we want, that they are the teacher who, who we shall be proud of, and you, you even you are te choosing Paji. teaching as a passion. Paji, I would <coughs> request that uh, we go for a commercial break, and yep. after the break, yes, we will continue from there. Thank you, Thank you viewers and uh, panelists, for the good work done so far. Welcome. The Teacher Management Information System, TMIS, is one of the innovations the Ministry of Education and Sports has rolled out to have all teachers register online. This is in line with the spirit of the National Teacher Policy to professionalize the teaching profession and the Ministry's effort to collate teacher data in a single database for better teacher management. Join us as we host officials of the Ministry of Education and Sports to discuss the teacher management information system. The show is sponsored by the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, under the Norwegian Teacher Initiative in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Sports. What does it mean to be closer together? It's taking the last bus home for a surprise visit. Closer together is strangers finding a connection. It's bringing home something much more than a box. It's the warmth of home or the beginning of something new. There's magic in sharing the things that we love because it's those things that bring us close together. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. 
We've cut and reduced our MTN Momo withdrawal rates. Now, you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rates. You also get MTN Century Points when you deposit, send and withdraw MTN Mobile Money. Visit our Momo agents countrywide and withdraw mobile money at our reduced rates from 1st May 2021. Everywhere you go, MTN. The Teacher Management Information System, TMIS, is one of the innovations the Ministry of Education and Sports has rolled out to have all teachers register online. This is in line with the spirit of the national teacher policy to professionalize the teaching profession and the Ministry's effort to collate teacher data in a single database for better teacher management. Join us as we host officials of the Ministry of Education and Sports to discuss the teacher management information system. The show is sponsored by the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, under the Norwegian Teacher Initiative in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from that break and to once again thank and recognize the support that UNESCO puts into this program to make sure that you enjoy the National Teacher Policy discussion and team is in your living room or online wherever you are. My name is Patrick Kaboyo. I'm the National Secretary of NA and also a member of the National Teacher Policy Technical Committee. Haj, before we went into mm. a break, yep. you were discussing teacher, teacher. symbolism. Mm -hmm. I would like you to continue <coughs> with that, but also usher us into the essence of unity in yeah. the national teacher policy. Yeah, thank you once again. Of course, we also thank UBC for hosting <laughs> us and for allowing us to come here and really inspire the people of this country about the teacher. The teacher makes everybody. The teacher is the mother profession. So I would like to see that that glory of a teacher is, is re restored. For some of us who are about 50 years who are taught by teachers, they were the most respected persons in our villages. Everybody wanted to become a teacher. That's how we were inspired to become teachers. And this is the glory we would like to bring back by having teachers who are qualified, by having teachers who, res who, who enter the teaching profession as a passion, not entering it as a last resort. We want to, uh, to eliminate from this, the system those teachers who impose themselves as teachers, like Valentine was saying, simply because I went through school, I finished my senior four, I finished my, my bachelor's in whatever, then there are family class and teaching. So this is the teacher symbolism. We want to, a, 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 to reach a situation where teachers are respected in every society, in every community where they go. We want to raise in our system teachers who do things that are not supposed to be heard of uh, in the teaching profession. So, <coughs> like you have said, uh, the policy wants us to establish the Uganda National Teacher Policy. I would begin by an update. What has been done so far in towards establishing this institution, which is an equivalent of a university, is that our Minister of Sports and Gender, also First Lady, has already appointed a task force, which started last September with one year's assignment to establish this institution. <coughs> and once this institution is established, uh, we have already decided where it will be. It will be at Shimon Primary Teachers College, located in Ichira. That's where uh, it will be established. We al also have a technical team that is there working on writing programs and so on and so forth. And like I said earlier on, this uh, uh, unit will be responsible for the training of our teachers in this country. And it will set the standards on which teachers are trained. That means we also work with all other institutions that are trained teachers to make sure that they train uh, programs that are more or less similar to, to concerning those critical things that a teacher uh, must have to be regarded as a professional teacher. <coughs> now, what does this mean to our teachers who are in the field? Because earlier on I said, the policy says all teachers must be graduate teachers. The policy is giving uh, a minimum of 10 years, I mean a maximum of 10 years uh, to our teachers. For example, those who are certificate teachers at grade three, if they have 10 years to upgrade to a degree level. And we would like to call upon them to immediately start enrolling in the institutions. They do their diplomas. Then eventually after two years diploma, they can go for either three or two years degree in the institutions of higher learning. 
so that by the end of 10 years, probably from next year, they should be able to be at that level. Uh, UNITE would also be in charge of uh, determining <coughs> which continuous professional courses teachers should add on themselves. And these uh, courses would be, some of them would be offered by UNITE, but some of them could be offered by other service providers. And th that could be universities, this could be NGOs, this could be <coughs> other institutions of, of, of higher learning that provide these CPDs to our teachers. And whoever teacher gets this course will, will be certified and it will feed into the teacher information management system that we have been talking about. Such that at the end of two years when somebody's registration certificate has expired, the teacher council would just by going to the system would be able to tell whether you deserve to be re-registered or not. And in a case you have not done, you have not certified them, it will mean you will need more training to be able to be registered again. Uh, so UNITE is going to have <coughs> very many programs uh, for teachers to ensure that our teaching force is upgraded to the level that we want. Thank you. Paj, thank you for that sharing. And I want to believe that the public is already appreciating the steps taken. Yeah, hope so. Maybe for public consumption, I want to ask you two mm. fundamental questions. Yes, please. One is who are those eminent Ugandans spearheading the establishment of UNITE right now? And mm. two, whether training institutions or universities have already embraced this reform to inform the trainees mm -hmm. or the students in those respective institutions mm -hmm. about these processes. Mm -hmm. I know some are watching us, yep. but we also need that information mm -hmm. from you. Yeah, uh, the, the task force that I've talked about <coughs> is uh, chaired by Professor Betty Ejzati. She is the Dean of Faculty of Education, Makero University. And the Dean of Faculty of Chambogo University is the Vice Chairperson of that com this committee. We have Mr. Barugahare, who is our Policy Analyst in the Ministry of Education. Uh, and I forget other names. But it's these fine. are prominent educationists that have been in working. And some of them have been on this program. They have been here presenting this teacher policy. So these are the people that are really spearheading this one. Regarding the second question, uh, all institutions we have gone out, we, are, we have gone out to work with all of the education institutions to make sure that they sensitize uh, their clientele, the, the people they, they, they take in. First of all, universities are reforming their programs to match what uh, the teacher policy says. Uh, for the other institutions like primary teachers colleges, uh, the Ministry of Education and Sports is reforming them because eventually now they must move from a degree awarding rather from certificate awarding to degree awarding. <coughs> and what we are doing right now is to make sure that the, the, the tutors that are there go for further studies with a minimum of, uh, of masters, so that by the time we begin these programs, they are already on board. For the national teacher colleges, we have national teacher colleges in this country. These ones will start very soon, most likely this uh, August or September. They should be beginning with the, a deg degree program. And here we have begun by reform, uh, rehabilitating and adding more infrastructure. We have put there a lot of ICT equipment. We have uh, retrained and trained the, the lecturers that are there. So they should be ready to do this. While the universities, we have been there to, to sensitize them. We have shared with them what the teacher policy says. And they are working closely with the UNITE so that they are, their training programs are synchronized and harmonized so that uh, the teacher we have from any university, whether it's from Gulu University, is it from Kumi, is it Cavendish, whatever university is, is provided it is in Uganda, matches a standard that is required of a teacher. Thank you so Haji. Thank you, the Minister of Education and Sports. Thank you, Tiet. But most importantly, thank you, UNESCO, for enabling us speak to the wider public and uh, i heard you talk about a cpd mm. and i would love to bring in uh, valentine the ict challenge is quite enormous in the field there where you find both the head teacher and the teacher fidgeting with those gadgets could you share with us benefits of timis mm since TIMIS is part of the teacher policy. And then from the benefits, you will also share with us 
whether there are challenges that teachers are registering from your do docket. Okay, thank you. Thank you, moderator. Uh, ICT may be a challenge, but it's not a challenge. Mm. Uh, why is it not a challenge? If you want to learn it, it is not a challenge. So you say teachers might or oh, are fidgeting uh, with their teachers in various schools. I will give you one tip. Each school, preferably government aided school, were given computers by UCC through the Ministry of Education and Sports. Each school, each government school, all over the county. So I highly doubt whether the head teachers of government schools are still fidgeting <laughs> up to now. <laughs> Can we have also those computers go to private schools? Uh, now, mm. that's where you lie, and mm. I think you will handle that aspect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in, in a committee where you sit, mm -hmm. you, yes. you'll bring in that, and that will be looked into. They do uh, lobbying. Uh, it mm. will, yeah, the door is open. Uh, the mm. door is never closed always. Mm. Because uh, private schools are part of us. Government schools are part of us. And we all go to both schools, mm. uh, be it private or government. So they are the same. And we have the same teachers, uh, literally teaching in all these government and private schools. So let's not look at ICT as a challenge uh, when it comes to applicability. When we put in the head of our teachers and, and the head teachers that ICT will challenge you, they will stay by that. I can say that uh, learning ICT requires some few means and you get into that. You don't need to go into deeper ICT component. Can you start an application on a computer? And UCC, uh, Minister of Education through UCC, did a lot of retooling, and they still do it. Retooling is where uh, I, UCC picks teachers from all the schools and trains them. That has been ongoing until it's still ongo. Teachers are being trained. Each school at least has, if less, five teachers that have attended so far this training done by UCC, the Uganda Communications Commission. And that is with engagement with the Ministry of Education and Sports to ensure that teachers adapt. So having put computers in schools, this was a message to teachers. Please, during your free time, go and learn. The ministry may not come to pick a teacher or a teacher and drugs that particular person to the computer lab. When a computer is there and you have a technical person, a technician at the school level, teachers are free to go to these computer labs and learn. So learning ICT sometimes is self-centered. The continuous professional development, teachers can go in for that. You don't need to have a lot of time studying computer application. You need two or one month something like that, and you master a few things, then you adjust as time goes. Depending on which program you want to learn on a computer, you concentrate on that. You don't need to learn over everything. You learn computers depending on. Let me tell you one trigger thing with ICT. You concentrate in the area that you need to work along with. You cannot go and concentrate everywhere. You may not learn it. You go and concentrate in the area that I need to have knowledge on. Right now, we're having online studies. During COVID, you know, we had lockdown. We still have lockdown. Mm. And teachers must always be forced to adapt to a system where they can send notes through emails, where they can send notes through other school-related systems. These are all niches of ICT. Or where they can teach on where phone. Where they can teach on phone. Mm. You get it? So there is nothing that we can do now without ICT. At least one component of ICT will be there. So which challenges are teachers facing on the system? Teachers outside there don't allow to pay even mm. a single coin. For these teams. For these teams. Why would you pay this? Huh? We get responses on email. So if a teacher goes to an internet cafe because was, he has no skills, to that. please do. When you go to an internet cafe, mm. they will charge you. But you can do this thing by your own. 
So why would you go to an internet cafe, the person, the gentleman there, the lady is too man hungry, he sees you, he knows or she knows this is a cash. The person will charge you the amount of money that you have not spent if you did this by yourself at a school where you're teaching. Go to your school, get somebody of, of highest knowledge better than you if I told you fear to, 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 to approach it. Each school I can guarantee you there's somebody of ICT technical know-how who can do this. I interact with these people, we interact as I sit there, we interact with this by lot all over the country. So Valentine, the program is free. The program is free. Okay. You, they charge you because you want to be charged. If you can afford to buy these people are always on WhatsApp. Okay. They're on Facebook. Let me tell you, they're on YouTube. Live streaming using <laughs> data they, they get from Airtel yeah, yeah. MT and the rest. But they want to go and pay money excessive money at cafe yet they can use somebody within the school to use the internet that UCC gave to school through government of Uganda to use to do this work Valentine did UCC give computers and it also gave computer antivirus and it also gave hard drives to these schools or it only gave a computer now when we talk of a computer i was meaning the full system the composition take us, take us through <laughs> the whole package <laughs> the whole that package schools got mm. and after that mm -hmm. i will give you another question uh -huh. for the benefit of our viewers now for the benefit of the viewers yes the schools got entire computer system package. What do I mean? There is a system unit. There is a monitor. You have a keyboard. You have a mouse. So the system unit in there, I don't want to go to technical terms for ICT because we are being viewed by different people. True. Has whatever you're talking about, the hard disk. They gave them functional computers. Functional. When I talk about function, it means you put it there and start using direct. You don't need to go for technical difficulties in making them work. Everything is sorted. Your work is to start to use. Actually, they were even set for them. They were not only delivered, they were set mm -hmm. in a school lab that the school provided. Okay. Yes. It's at this point that I will need to engage you further mm -hmm. in your office with the UCC mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm why private schools were not factored into the distribution bearing in mind that the students in those schools mm -hmm. are not private but they are ugandan citizens. I, I think this must be a discussion for another day for Maybe another day <laughs> yeah, <we should> yes <laughs> but i wanted <laughs> viewers to know that uh, viewers yeah the ministry is looking into that era all right and all these schools will be considered all schools in uganda is for the government be yeah. it private or public. We, we, or be it public. Yeah. We are all the same. You go to a private school today, tomorrow in a public school. Mm. So we intermix. True. So each initiative, each input the minister is doing, is doing it equivalently, minus discriminating whether you're in a private sector or, or a public. Hey, yes. Thank you, Valentine. So we, we go uniform. Yes, <laughs> and on that note, mm. Haji Kibedi, the national teacher policy talks about the 21st century skills yeah. and the teacher would want to see. Mm -hmm. Who is that teacher do we want to see? Do we want to see a teacher who is accountable, a teacher who is a leader? Which kind of teacher does this policy promise this country? Can I first of all talk about the, the benefits of Tim ten, is very please, briefly. Please do. Which he, although uh, he would add on. You see, in, before the establishment of uh, this teacher management information system, teachers were streaming our office, were coming to our office with their documents. So that would look at these documents, and if they were really okay, then they would start processing to type their, ty their, their certificates. And teachers would spend even a week in our, uh, at our office, because maybe you have come, but the commissioner who is in charge of, type of, of signing is not around. They would come from all over the country, from Moroto, from Arua, from Kasese, from, from Bundibujo, and so on and so forth. So the first benefit that this system has put in place is that the teacher can register at the comfort of even her bedroom. 
if it has a good smartphone, it does this, the scanning there and then starts filling the form after uh, some little data and then it sends it to, to, to us. So that is the benefit of the teacher. We also at the TH department, we benefited because sometimes, for example, when there was a national advert of recruiting teachers at whatever level, we would have hundreds and hundreds of teachers coming and therefore we could do, not be able to do our other office work but we were there to see to make sure that we can now i mean we register these teachers and suspend some work so to us also as a minister of education we find that has a very big benefit the other issue is that sometimes the uh, the district service commissions would want to call us and we have these documents but we are not we are suspecting this could be maybe a forgery like earlier on he's told you now the district service commissions just click on this system and they can tell whether this is a, a, correct, a correct document or not. So the, the, it now reduces the work, teacher management throughout the country. But back to the question that you, you had asked me, uh, what type of teacher would we like to see? The 21st century skills are quite many. Yeah, sometimes some people call them life skills. We would like to see a teacher who is empowered a teacher who loves his or her job, a teacher who has skills and competences that is able to help uh, the, the learner put before his or her hands. You have been discussing ICT with Valentine. The, the, the generation we have today are not BBC, they are not born before computers. It's a digital generation. They know more about computers, they know more about ICT than our teachers. So we are saying the teacher we produce now here must be above the learners, must be able to use ICT as one of the, the 21st century skills to make learning easier, to make learning meaningful, and to make our learners gain these competences. We would like to see a teacher who, who, who can really take on the CPDs we are talking about without necessarily going to a, to a, in a classroom. He can do it in his bedroom. This is the teacher we want to see, that he, you can take on a course from any university in the world in the comfort of your bedroom or in your office. As you finish your work at five, you begin on a course. These are the teachers we would like to see. We would like to, to see teachers who are aggressive, who, who are not there to lament all the time. How do you use the knowledge you have besides your salary to generate money that makes your life comfortable? So that is the type of teacher that we would like to see. Why well, see teachers who respect the environment? It's a cross-cutting issue, and it's one of the key issues in the, in the teacher policy, that a teacher who is aware of the environment, both from the local and globally. We like to see teachers who are gender sensitive, that have the, the gender issues at hand, can handle our teachers, uh, rather our learners, with that sensitivity in his head. Not like during our time, zone, is that mathematics is for boys? No. That is gender discrimination as far as that subject is concerned. So these are the teachers we want to prepare that they are well informed what is going in around them in the immediate environment, but also in the entire world. One teachers who can collaborate, teachers who can, inter, who can make networks within the country and outside. So that, is the, that individualism of saying, yeah, I'm a teacher, I'm, 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 I mean, I teach mathematics, nobody can do it, it doesn't work anymore. One teachers who can share collaborate with others and share their challenges, share the, what they are benefited, good practices, those are the type of teachers we want in the 21st century to be able to teach a, a learner of the 21st century. Thank you, Haji. You are pointing to a teacher who is a critical thinker. Exactly. A teacher who is creative. Exactly. And a teacher who is confident. Exactly. You teachers listening to us, wherever you are, we need teachers who can expressly talk about these issues mm. without missing words because this program is meant to sensitize you. But when we do this, we have to be conversant of the changing dynamics. And in the changes, we note that some teachers do apply, but their documents are rejected mm. or they are bounced. Mm. Valentine, what is the process of verification of these people's documents because sometimes their documents are yeah. rejected true true take us through uh, concerning the rejection normally uh we can say queried 
we rejection will be a very strong term uh, to tell a teacher outside there that you've been rejected. Mm. Why have I been rejected? You know, when, when you're told you've been rejected, just imagine you're going somewhere and <laughs> they tell you you've rejected you. So we use a simple word of querying them because when we query you, you can change and, and come back. We query and advise on what to do. So it means we've not rejected you. However, back to your question. Uh, verification has uh, three stages. Normally, uh, our teachers, when they come to the ministry and, and complain how the process has delayed, I uh, will take them through it, explain to them what it takes to, to ensure the certificate comes out. So, upon submission by a teacher, we have a level one where uh, the team that commissioner here supervises, overseas, uh, work at. Level one, documents are received, screened, and if something is wrong, that level one team will bounce you back. With a reason, we tell you the reason why this has happened. We've queried you, we notify you through your email. Your application has been queried because of reason A, B, C, D. Please do A, B, C, D and get back to us. As simple as that, in a very polite statement. Mm. So if a teacher goes through that level, a teacher is forwarded to second level. Second level commissioner here operates. He re-verifies or confirms that what the team at first level did was correct. Right. On top of verifying the documents, he also looks at the work done by the first level team. Did they accidentally pass somebody who's not supposed to be there? Or did they genuinely pass a teacher? So if he confirms that a teacher left stage one, is at stage two and is genuinely there, he approves the teacher. He confirms. Actually, at that level, they confirm and grades the teacher. He gives the teacher the level of qualification. The teacher lies under, depending on the documents presented. He then forwards the teacher to the last level where commissioners and others also work. And that level, the team there re-verifies what the first and second level did. And upon convincingly assured that all is well, the commissioner will issue the certificate of registration. This certificate will go to the teacher's email. So at all these levels, a teacher can be rejected or queried. Let me not use rejection. If a teacher, okay, teachers always, I have gotten a file number, I had been approved, I was even confirmed. How comes? They pushed me back. What happened? Yet I had passed all these stages. Mm. They forget that at all this stage, anybody can bounce you. Mm. Because if I notify error, even if you had passed level one, I will bounce you. Yeah. If at the last level, something is wrong that accidentally bypassed this other level, they will bounce you. Mm. So you can be queried at any level, and that one has no question that why have we been queried at this level? So, Valentine. Let me mention just a few, the uh, common mistakes yes, that I our know. teachers need to know, especially those who have not yet registered. Many of you forget to put there your national ID, therefore we shall, re, re, uh, we shall query that and request you to attach. Some of you don't put their certified copies. You go to your head teacher or your former principal, he, he, he stamps and you think that is certified. They must be certified by the university or the higher institution where the person trained from. Some of you forget to attach documents that totally, completely, after filling the form, it forgets to attach the, the PDF file that we have talked about. Therefore, in, in that respect, we bounce it back. Or within the documents, you may attach your, say, your university degree, but you, have, you forget to attach the transcript. It means we shall query it. Or you may attach everything, but you forget the all-level certificate. Because we must prove that you progressed from here, from primary to secondary to A, to A level to A level to university, and we must see that there, there, there is evidence that these documents are yours and you pass. Some other common mistake is when you go to your internet cafes, 
the, the people operating there, because they are dealing with many people, they mix up the documents. So you find Kaboyo Patrick is the applicant. But within them, there is the O-level certificate of Chibedi. Therefore, we have to query that. Those are thank the common Thank mistakes. you so much, Haji, and viewers, for the time you have accorded us. Valentine, I want you to do two things. One, mm -hmm. share with us the feedback mechanism to mm -hmm. the teachers who are listening to us. Mm -hmm. Because communication, as a communication expert, mm -hmm. we need to offer them timely feedback. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, you also give us mm -hmm. your last remarks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the moderator. Uh, the communication mechanism. One, we give real-time communications to these teachers. When you go into the system website, there are contact numbers in there. There are email addresses in there that we give to them feedback in real time in case of any complaint. Yep. We have a team at the ministry under the, the, the ICT high division that is in charge of giving immediate response to any complaint the teacher will forward. And if you can see when you get access to this, you get emails in there. Your last remark. My last remark is, teachers, let's embrace ICT. Whoever is viewing, let's embrace ICT. ICT is the way to go. Uh, we can't do anything now in the world without ICT. All workplaces, wherever you go, there will be a component of computer, whether you want it or you don't want it. Not necessarily doing registration, but everywhere overboard. Even your phones are ICT, so you can't do away without it. Thank you, Valentine, for that. Haji Kibedi Nkutu, your last remarks. Yeah, thank you and very much. Message. Yeah, first, thank you very much for hosting us, and thank you, UBC, for allowing us to come here and air out our views to the, our viewers. Uh, my word goes to every Ugandan. Teacher policy has come to reform the teaching profession, and everybody must, that's the word I would use, must, we don't have enough time to explain it, must embrace it. This book is available, it, can, it is free of charge, even on the website, to, uh, to, uh, talking about the teacher policy. For teachers, make sure you read, understand it, and start changing the way it requires to, you to be. If you are not yet a graduate, please go back and read and become a graduate. If you are a graduate, still you can progress uh, so that you continue to be a useful uh, teacher. And to the public, please, let us help the teaching profession to be the best profession like it is in other countries. I thank you. Thank you, Haji. I recall in my public policy lectures, uh, gentleman Kaluya Mwase mm -hmm. told us that uh, a policy, public policy, is very important at the level of education process. Yeah. And what we are doing is sensitization and education, which is very key in terms of policy formation. So at this point, I want to thank UNESCO for the support given to this program. Thank you, UBC, for the opportunity given to us. I want to thank you, panelists, for having accepted to come here. I'm also part of the process, but to say thank you to the Ministry of Education and TIET, and we look forward to having more programs of this nature. I thank you. The Teacher Management Information System, TMIS, is one of the innovations the Ministry of Education and Sports has rolled out to have all teachers register online. This is in line with the spirit of the National Teacher Policy to professionalize the teaching profession and the Ministry's effort to collate teacher data in a single database for better teacher management. Join us as we host officials of the Ministry of Education and Sports to discuss the teacher management information system. The show is sponsored by the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, under the Norwegian Teacher Initiative in collaboration 